We all read inspirational quotes online. Be the change that you wish to see in the world, live as if you were to die tomorrow and so on. Today in Let's Connect, I want to introduce to you all a person who literally follows these quotes and take it to the next level. He's a geek, a tech savvy, an avid cyclist, a marathon runner, a fitness freak, a motivational speaker, but he likes to call himself an ardent A.R. Rahman fan. Let's welcome Chanda Ram to Let's Connect. And finally, we got connected. All thanks to the man A.R. So uh, let's uh, start with the man himself. Even though we both uh, live in the same city, it took us so many years, but finally we got connected. All thanks to A.R. Rahman. So let's start with the man himself. Where did it all start, Chanda? Yeah, thank you, Anup. Uh, thanks for having me. It's pretty amazing, right? Because I know you've been living in Melbourne for quite a number of years. I've been here too. And then, um, but it's magical that uh, Rahman's music actually brought us together. Um, it started right from the Roja days for me. I, I don't know, something happened when I heard his music for the first time ever. Um, I felt there was magic in it and I couldn't actually describe what it did to me and then and after that I was I don't know I was attracted to his music with all subsequent tracks and albums that came out and uh, um, this is magic I don't know um, it has influenced me and impacted me in a lot of ways um, and uh, yeah I, I feel extremely privileged to be existing in this era called ARMO. Absolutely. So, what are some of the crazy things that you have done towards the love for the man? <laughs> um, I've done a number of things. Probably, uh, um, I wouldn't say the most craziest thing. I don't know. Uh, this is this was my way of. Uh, showing my respect to the maestro um, so I always wanted to get my dream car which was a BMW Z4 um, and I had made up my mind this is going back about um, four years ago I think I had made up my mind that I was going to go and get myself a BMW Z4 and then interestingly enough uh, BMW had stopped the production just the day before I went into the showroom to make um, make my purchase and then I was very disappointed and I said to myself okay I'll wait until they come back with a new version so I settled down for another car then and then yeah uh, after like three or four years I think that's when BMW made an announcement uh, uh, that they're going to come out with the new BMW uh, Z4. And yes, so I went in there and I was going to get my dream car and uh, yeah, you know, it, it, I hadn't thought about what my number plate would be. I knew it was going to be something special, but I wasn't sure what it was going to be. And I knew that it was not going to be my name because my previous car had my name on it saying Chanda. I felt it was very uh, selfish in a way saying my own car and my name so I didn't want that to happen with my new car or my dream car so I kept thinking about it and then interestingly enough AR's music was playing in the background and then it struck to me okay this is it I think I found Why not? what I wanted and then that's it I love ARR I straight away went and um, ordered my custom plate and it arrived on time for, uh, on the day I was going to pick up my new car and uh, yeah, that's it. Magic happened after that. <laughs> <laughs> and and the frenzy that followed after the news went viral on Twitter. Actually, I first wrote it on Instagram uh, saying, uh, Hey, A.R. Rahman, sir, uh, I might be your greatest fan. I don't know, but I have always, uh, always adored you. And then your music has changed my life. And today I got my new brand new car which is my dream car and I wanted to cherish it more by having your name on it and I put that up on Instagram and then in less than two hours 
I actually saw a notification coming up saying A R Rahman just commented, and he commented saying Mubarak, congratulations, exclamation mark, and something like that. And then that's it. I was like over the moon. I hadn't expected something like that to happen in less than two hours after I put that post. Um, and then I was preparing myself to make my way to the Great Ocean Road Marathon. Um, so I was. getting ready to make my way there and then i was on my way to apollo bay in the car and i figured that my phone kept buzzing left right and center and then i was wondering what was happening um so i pulled my car over onto the left and then i had a look and i saw that there's so many twitter comments and retweets and something like that was happening and i was in I wasn't sure what exactly happened and then I then had a look further and then realized that so had retweeted it and said drive safely with a smiley and then uh, the internet went nuts after that um <laughs> so well that was so magical so I continued driving towards Apollo Bay again and then as I reached Apollo Bay I saw that there were a number of calls from India I have no idea how they got my number but it was interestingly in a number of news channels from India had got my number and they had tried contacting me and it was it's very interesting how they even got my number but anyway having said that um it was a very special moment for me and the next day in the morning I had my marathon and then I I know I was fully energized after whatever happened and then Yeah the marathon went really well but I still could not believe whatever happened <laughs> it still feels uh magical for me when I think about it it still feels special for me whenever I take a picture with the car even now what more do you need yeah. as an Adam and fan of course <laughs> well the thing is though uh I had a number of interviews uh happening straight after that SBS um uh, uh then uh, indian link and number of indian uh, news channels as well but the way when i think about it i did not do this with any intent or expectation i basically wanted to just show my respect to ar uh, that i absolutely adore him but that's pretty much it um but everything else that happened was just magical something that i had never 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 expected so yeah <laughs> i've been lucky i should say i've been blessed that's all um blessed to the fact that um i have been able to connect with the likes of yourself got to see your, how talented your daughter is and all the other people that have connected with me from every part of the world so it's it feels very special absolutely and uh, you also made some amazing friends in the music industry purely out of your passion towards uh, air's music please share some experience when the number plate thing happened last year uh, as i said it was a very magical uh, moment a uh, number of amazing things happened straight after that but one of them was the fact that uh, uh, shrinivas sir from india connected with me and he appreciated uh, my respect for uh, sir and uh, then well i was already a big fan of shrinivas sir then i told him that i would love to meet him uh, when i come down to chennai and then he very gladly accepted that and uh, and then i i knew that shrinivas sir was also a big ar fan and that was when i had made a t-shirt with something like this says i love arr so i had made a t-shirt for myself and i actually made two t-shirts one for shrinivas sir and the other one for man himself so i sent it to shrinivas um uh, with chocolates and stuff and then he straight away wore it uh, as soon as he received it and he even put that picture out on the yeah. social media and then i saw the photo that, <laughs> that went viral again um uh, and then he did say that he uh, gave the other t-shirt to ar himself too so i'm pretty sure one of his assistants must must have uh, taken that um so yeah i mean 
um through that of course i mean i met srinivas was my very good friend we 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 still are great friends even at a personal level even now um and then yeah of course i um made my way to india uh, in august 2019 for the chennai concert and the fact was um a number of ar rahman fans actually came up and then started taking pictures with me as they recognized um which is something that i had never experienced before they made me feel like a celebrity within a minute um interestingly enough i was also at the airtel store last year to get a sim card for my phone uh an indian sim card and then that guy recognized me and he said sir ninga thana the ar rahman fan and then he takes a picture um uh, and so i had i had very interesting experiences like this or special experiences like this um and then i was off to the concert and then yeah a number of singers straight away became my friends uh it's been very very special and then um i was also invited uh, for the rehearsals as well before the concert um i also had a chance to visit the km conservatory um i got to go around the campus and i was very much on the terrace when the rehearsals were happening i got to meet sir there again before the concert he was very happy that i had come and um yeah anyway so it's been very special a lot of amazing things happened beautiful beautiful and and then you said that i love ar a podcast yeah So, so yeah just just let the people know where, where they can find it what to expect and, and why people should watch it yeah sure uh the i know air po- podcast is uh it's only about 7 or 8 weeks old it's very pretty recent uh this is going back um uh, when the lockdown started um i i was just chilling on the couch i remember one day and then that was straight after a tech tech podcast that i did out uh, which i went in for as a guest for another uh, podcaster and straight after the podcast i was like thinking okay it might be nice to listen to an ar rahman podcast so i looked it up and i could not find anything and then i just struck with an idea saying you know what i could not find anything why not i start one so i straight away made my way to jb hi-fi uh to get all the gears that i needed to start a podcast and then i did not waste any time i set it all up and then i decided you know what it is going to be the i love arr podcast and um the intent was very plain and simple um the fact that there will be no commercial aspect to this podcast whatsoever yeah. and uh and then also the fact that i wanted to talk to people who have been associated with ar since the early days because i feel i felt that they will have a lot of uh, memories and stories to tell which Absolutely. me as a fan would love to hear what they say and then as i said very early that um i feel very blessed to be existing in the zira called ar rahman that's why i wanted to ensure that I treasure all these conversations that I have with these blessed souls who have had the opportunity to work with sir and uh, and at the same time um I want to do my bit from a charity perspective as well uh, this may not be related to the podcast but um I know I'll be doing uh, things for the AR Rahman Foundation uh very soon um i'll keep that very personal for now but uh yeah there are a number of ideas that i've got in my mind uh in terms of we know that sir uh teaches music for the underprivileged uh kids in india about he's got about 100 kids uh in his school who are underprivileged and they get to learn music at no cost so i want to work on a pathway where i can hopefully do my bit and increase the number of students in the km conservatory um as much as i can so that will be probably my next project after i love arr that's so podcast. inspirational chanda that's so inspirational and what's also inspirational is your 
fitness transformation. When did you decide enough is enough? I come from a South Indian background and uh, of course we guys are used to eating rice three or four times a day and uh, well I I know I was very well fed by my mom uh, right from my childhood and I was always a little a very generously built guy in my past um, and then I moved to Australia about 20 years ago and uh, being a student and stuff like that I, of course you don't get home cooked food um, so I, I resorted to eating outside and then I finished my uni then started working of course eating outside and stuff like that and my how should I say it my routine wasn't all that very interesting so I would finish work come back home and maybe go to this pizza store on Bogut Road I remember it's called the Johnny B's Johnny Boy's Pizza I would buy a family pizza which was like really big one and then have a couple of beers almost every night um, and then have as many slices of pizza I can that night and then go to bed then have the remaining pizza the next morning for breakfast and then lunch and then that cycle was going on and on and my waistline just kept increasing so there was a point when when my waistline was 44 inches and I found it absolutely awful uh, to be seeing myself on the mirror um, because I had to tuck my tummy in to uh, hide from my from the embarrassment so I did not quite like that and that day there was there was there was this one week I remember where I was having hungry jacks for lunch and dinner for all the seven days at the, on the seventh day I realized oh my god what have I done I can't imagine what I've just done so I just said to myself I want to make a change but I don't know what the change is and then I decided to go to bed and then I thought next day in the morning when I wake up I will do something but I don't know what it was going to be so I went to bed after having a thought about it and then the next morning I woke up got ready and made my way to Virgin Active Burke Street uh, the gym on Burke Street um, so I went there and I said to them I want to sign up as a member and they, they said uh, do you want a fitness trainer to help you lose weight and I said no no I do not want anyone I want to do it on my own and so I wanted to figure out what works for me and then I wanted to go through the hard way of finding out what really works and what doesn't work so I started working out in the gym uh, did a lot of research as well reading on the internet and stuff like that and I did a lot of cardio classes to start with so my first ever cardio session was a spin class in the gym um, and then halfway through the class I really wanted to quit and go back home and eat fries and stuff that's what was going on in my head but I didn't want to do that so I got through the class and at the end of it I felt very good it was a feeling that I had never experienced before and then I, I felt good and I went back home and then I said okay you know what I'm going back to the gym again tomorrow so I did that for one week I felt really really good and then I thought just doing workouts alone is not going to help me so I had to make changes to my diet so overnight I decided I'm going to stop eating rice and overnight I decided I'm going to quit drinking beer so um, it's been nine years now uh, since I got into the transformation since I went through the transformation journey and I have not touched beer I don't eat chocolates rice I have not eaten for years and years but lately I've started to eat brown rice maybe once in three weeks maybe one or two cups um, I made a lot of changes to my diet during the transformation I lost 46 kilos in six months uh, uh, once I lost I became a brand new person altogether um, and that's when I started uh, setting up goals for myself uh, one of the goals was to take up running so although I had lost weight I was not really fit um, 
I was uh, because all the fat was gone, but I was not really fit. Fit, so I wanted to train towards that. So I took up uh, running as a goal. So I signed up for a 10k 10k race. I started training towards that. Started running one kilometer, then two kilometers, and things like that. So when I got through my first ever race, which which was 10 kilometers, I felt amazing. I got my first ever medal. So these are all some of the medals I've got, like 80 odd medals. Not not that I'm bragging about it, but every medal has a story behind it. So the first ever medal that I got was for a 10 kilometer race. and then after that i signed up for a half marathon 21.1 um and then of course uh i've been doing a number of races since then so every year i do like 10 or 12 running races um and i also did a full marathon 2 years ago 42.2 um then yeah so running was my goal and as i was getting through my running goals in terms of the races i wanted to take up a brand new goal and that was bike riding so i got myself a bike and then i started uh, de- decided that i'm going to do the around the bay uh, event in melbourne and i wanted to sign up for the toughest course for it which was 250 km of riding so i signed up for that um did train very hard and then so on the day of the race yes uh, it took me 8 and 1/2 hours of riding to get through 250 km it wasn't easy that was probably one of the toughest things that i have done so got through that and then i was ready for my next goal and then then i decided yep it's going to be bollywood dancing so i i uh, joined the shamak dawa dance group in melbourne so i uh, danced with them for about 2 and a half 3 years i uh, did like four public performances with two being the lead uh so that's been another another amazing journey um and then after that i took up yoga as my next goal so i've been practicing yoga for the last 7 years now it's been amazing um i was highly inflexible although i was fit i was inflexible so yoga does a lot of magic um and then after that i was ready for my next goal which is tennis so my current goal right now is tennis i took it up uh, about 2 years ago where i did not even know how to hold a racket uh, so a lot of practice lot of lessons and things like that now i am into social comps and things like that so it's been a journey sorry it was a long it's been quite answer, but... it's been quite a journey chanda i really hope people across the world watch this episode um, losing 46 kilos taking up cycling running tennis bollywood dancing what not It's been a so, fun journey that's when, for sure. So when you're not cycling when you're not running when you're not listening to AR what do you do what's your bread and butter? Um I work in IT. Um I work as a team leader for one of the leading consulting uh, organizations here in Melbourne. Um so I am the practice lead for the digital team. Um and then we build um um business applications on the Office 365 platform. um i am extremely passionate about what i work on i've been a huge uh, should i say a fanboy in the microsoft space uh since a very very long time um yeah that's that's my bread and butter it pays my bills uh to do everything else apart from work um yeah that's what i do and i also have a pet called happy so we guys spend a lot of time together awesome uh, you've also had musicians set up their music schools during this lockdown oh, yeah. i know uh, yeah. how important is it for a musician to have technical knowledge according to you um anup it's actually a great question um because it so happened that uh, as that's the best part about this i love air our podcast journey to be honest because i had invited alphonse uh, who became my very good friend in the recent trichy concert that i was in uh, in uh, india in the month of feb he yeah, we just hit off like friends as soon as we met and then he was talking to me like he had known me for years and years and he did not have any air around him that he was a celebrity although there were hundreds and hundreds of fans coming over to him to take pictures and all that 
that aside so we became friends so i invited him for uh, the i love arr podcast and um, that's when the lockdown also kicked in and so he came for the podcast then he asked me what software are you using for uh, this podcast i told him it's microsoft teams and he said you know what tell me more about this so we discussed about that i gave him a walk through about what this platform does and things like that and so he was extremely interested and then he said chanda we need to talk about this i said yeah that's fine so on a friday night i remember this is going back about a month or so ago i got a call from alphons on a friday night uh, at around 8 pm saying chanda i need your help so i asked him what's this and he said zoom has been banned in india due to security threats and all that and now i have my music school he has about 600 odd students in the school and about 10 teachers i think uh um, and he said we we need to come up with a solution so help me out and i said alphons you know what let's catch up tomorrow morning and i'll give you a walk through of what i think will work for you so we spent nearly about 6 hours in that conference call i think and he had a complete walk through of what's possible and uh, then after that we decided yeah all right we will start going ahead and start creating things the way it should work in terms of uh, replicating what a physical school will look like but doing it in a virtual environment so we it was a process so we spent the whole weekend just working on that as you might know as i had shared a few uh, snippets and uh, with that said i'm actually coming to your core question now Alphons went ahead and did a lot more other things after our uh, work that we did all, over that weekend. So on Monday and Tuesday, he went ahead and did a lot other things. And then I was wondering, all right, this actually I thought will require a bit of a learning curve, but this guy managed to do it on his own. And then I didn't ask him. I I, I appreciated him for what he did. And uh, interestingly enough, after uh the school was set up and it was successfully running for a week microsoft australia got in touch with us saying they wanted to hear from us on about this journey that we did so we had an interview with microsoft australia australia and then they were very pleased with what we had done and then during that interview is when alphons said that he is actually got a bachelor's in engineering in computer science and then i figured no doubt this guy knew a lot of stuff so now coming to your actual question again how much should a musician be technical look he he will need to be in this era that we are in right now unfortunately um, the covid-19 situation has forced pretty much the whole world into a digital transformation and uh, we don't have an option we can't be working in silos where we if i was an independent musician and i was not into technology and i was only going to going out there to perform in gigs and stuff like that and that's all i do for my bread and butter i might be in a bit of a challenging situation if that was my mindset in you you really have to be technically savvy uh, to exist in the situation that we are in right now and it's interesting how alphons was able to make that switch uh in terms of moving to a virtual thing straight away during this lockdown where his school is running success- successfully and then most recently we had another interview with microsoft india just last week um and then we were very highly appreciated for the work and then what's happened now is two of the other music leading music directors in india have approached me uh to help them out to build their online school so yeah it's awesome, been interesting Chandra. that's great news um i have a lot more question to ask you unfortunately we have time constraints thank you so much for spending your time with us i know you just back from a few podcast this evening itself um i have to thank you for your time um hope to talk to you soon on another session
Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Enjoy Thank you so much, Anup. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.